My Fusion System, Fusing a Thousand Chickens at the Start Chapter 531, The Life Disintegrating Poison That poison is very interesting, indeed. It is made from thousands of toxins, so its toxicity is complicated. I think it is also mixed with water from the spring of life. No wonder the poison appears to be very strong and can't be removed. The virus made from the water from the spring of life can constantly renew itself. Even if it is removed, it will regenerate. Watson ignored Fox's words and stroked his chin. His words stunned Fox. Thousands of toxins in the water of the spring of life? It sounded plausible. Did Watson really understand the healing arts? He seemed to have heard King Landar III introduce Watson. In addition to calling Watson the future heir, he also said he was the kingdom's number one genius. I did not ask you about the characteristics of the poison but whether you could cure it. It's not difficult for me to cure that poison. Watson nodded. He only needed the fusion system if he wanted to cure that poison. Even without that, he could extract the poison from his blood after obtaining the god of poison's remains. Since you can get rid of it, I'll leave the residence to you. Before leaving, the elven king had threatened the lives of the city's residents. It seemed like he really hated me. However, he definitely did not expect Watson to be here. He waved his hand at Fox, indicating that he should be treated first. Your Majesty, can the boy named Watson really do it? My condition is not particularly serious. Two of my subordinates have already become puppets. Should I let them receive treatment first? After hesitating for a moment, Fox gritted his teeth and asked that. He still did not believe in Watson's ability. Okay, then let your two subordinates try it first. King Landar III saw through Fox's thoughts and agreed to it. Men, bring my two guards whose brains have been corroded by the poison. Two guards in wheelchairs were quickly brought forward with the help of their companions. The guards' bodies had turned into puppets, with wooden veins appearing on their bodies, even half of their heads were covered in pale green grass. The poison caused their eyes to look in different directions. Their mouths were wide open, and saliva continued to drop from their mouths. They made a humming sound, looking very dull. What kind of poison is that? It's also contagious. The elven kingdom actually released such poison into the city? Are they trying to use the water to spread the poison and pollute the entire kingdom? Some of the noblemen standing behind King Landar III could not help but complain when they saw the miserable state of the two guards. Their bodies had turned into wood, and plants grew on them. They had turned into dumb, motionless plants. When they thought of that scene, many people felt their bodies turn cold, and goosebumps appeared on their bodies. It's a good thing that we came here and chased away the elves. Otherwise, when the elven kingdom takes over more cities and sprinkles that poison into the lakes, we'll be finished. Some noblemen complained while the rest patted their chests, showing a relieved expression. While they were talking, Watson saw the two guards in front of him, and a look of pity appeared in his eyes. He subconsciously reached out with his right hand and activated the fusion system. Fusion system, activate. Congratulations, master, for fusing two sets of platinum tier marionette poison. You have obtained a diamond tier poison, life disintegrating poison. Following the sound of the fusion system, the grass that grew on the two guards naturally fell off and turned into light in mid-air. The pale green light under the guards' skin also dissipated, and the pale green blood returned to red. The guards' eyes, originally in a daze, instantly widened. At that moment, they were at a loss as they touched their cheeks, their faces filled with surprise and confusion. The vegetative skin on my face is gone and the dullness in my brain has also disappeared. How did this happen? Has the poison in my body been cured? It really cured the poison. Fox, who was watching that scene from the side, was also stunned. He gasped. Over the past two days, he had endured a lot of torture because of the poison. Someone else had tried to treat the poison, but they had died instead. So, he was fearful of the poison. 
he did not expect Watson to cure it so easily. King Landar III and the other ministers appeared much calmer. They had already seen Watson's many outstanding skills. Watson had created underwater passageways that led to all regions of the Holy Dragon Kingdom, and he could also turn people into gold-tier elites with just a sip of that water. Would a mere platinum-tier poison be so hard to cure for him? Under everyone's astonished gazes, Watson raised his hand and placed the diamond-tier life disintegration poison in his hand. It was a ball of green foam-like poison. The foam constantly evaporated and expanded, disappearing into the air and continuously forming. It seemed like it would never disappear completely. Just looking at the appearance of the foam gave people an exquisite sense of beauty. No one would have thought that that foam was poison. Diamond tear poison, life disintegrating poison. Effect, once it comes into contact with a living being, it will cause an irreversible collapse and disintegrate into an energy factor that can be absorbed. Its effect on diamond tier and above elites will be weakened. The effect of this poison is not bad. Even if it is a poison contained in the god of poison's blood, few can surpass it, Watson said with satisfaction, putting the life disintegrating poison into his mouth and swallowing it. Your Majesty, I did not expect that Watson would be able to cure the marionette poison. No wonder you chose him to become the future king. To have such a deep understanding of the healing arts at such a young age is truly amazing. Since His Highness Watson has cured two of my subordinates, it's time for him to treat me. Fox extended his arm to Watson in a fawning manner. The fortress city was quite far from the royal city. It was located at the Holy Dragon Kingdom's border, so information was kept secret there. Unless magical devices were used, most news from the royal city would take ten days to half a month to reach there. Magical devices were usually used to convey important news, such as the enemy's invasion. There was also the news about the Royal Academy's tournament and Watson becoming the strongest genius in the kingdom. The fortress city heard some of the news, but no one took it too seriously. Their definition of the kingdom's genius was quite outdated. As long as one advanced to gold tier in their teens, they would be considered a genius. They had never seen it with their own eyes, so it was hard to imagine how powerful the kingdom's genius was. It was understandable that they had been worried about whether Watson could remove the poison. Watson thought it was funny to see Fox change of heart. So, he said, well, you said to treat those severely poisoned first. Even His Majesty had agreed. So, I'll treat someone else first since your symptoms are not severe. Chapter 532, Saving the Entire City His Highness Watson is right. The corner of Fox's mouth twitched. He really wanted to start treatment because he was partially poisoned, and it would be very inconvenient for him to be unable to move one hand. Unfortunately, he had no way to refute Watson's words because he was the one who said that he should treat the seriously ill first. He really regretted his decision. Watson had wanted to treat him then, why did he find an excuse to avoid it? In the end, he wasted a great opportunity. At Watson's request, the residents lined up in front of Watson so that he could cure them. That process lasted for about a day. By the time the last person was cured, it was already evening. Even though the toxins in your body have been removed, you will still be weak for some time. The best way is to go to the Golden River that has just appeared in the city and drink a teaspoon of water from the river. I guarantee that you will recover quickly and you will also gain unimaginable power. Watson addressed an elderly man with a hunched figure and a cane. Then, he pointed at a sea folk behind him and said, that sea folk soldier will take you there later. Your Highness Watson, thank you so much. Not only did you treat us, but you also did not ask for anything in return. I don't even know how to thank you. Here are ten copper coins. They are my savings. Now, I want to give them to you. The old man lifted his tattered clothes and looked at the wooden skin that had been corroded by the poison and turned back into human flesh. Trembling with excitement, he took out ten dirty coins from his clothes. He wanted to pass them to Watson. Before that, Watson reached out and pressed down on the money. 
he shook his head and said, I'm sorry, sir. I'm treating you because I want to, not because I want your money. As the guardian of the Holy See and the future king of the Holy Dragon Kingdom, this is my duty. May the will of the Holy Dragon Kingdom make you brave, and may the glory of God bless you. Praise the Holy Dragon Kingdom. Praise the gods. The old man excitedly took back the coins, drew a cross on his chest with his finger, bowed respectfully to Watson, and left with the sea folks. The sea folks led the old man to the golden river that had appeared in the city. At the same time, they told the old man about the changes that had occurred in the kingdom, including the shift in the kingdom's faith from the seven gods to Watson and Watson's various feats. The old man nodded from time to time. Soon, they arrived at the Golden River. After taking a spoonful of the Golden River water, the old man, who had been trembling and looking very weak, immediately threw away his walking stick. The wrinkles on his face had smoothened, and he looked more than ten years younger. This is also one of the miracles that young Master Watson performed. This can slow down the aging process, and the water is the best proof that young Master Watson is a god. The much younger man immediately ran on the bank of the river, and his eyes filled with tears as he praised Watson's greatness. So all of that was done by His Highness Watson. He is too great. He will lead the kingdom in the future, it is our honor to live in such a kingdom. Similar scenes could be seen everywhere on the river bank. Many residents were there to drink the water from the Golden River. Their bodies were no longer weak, and they had successfully advanced to gold tier. Some residents knelt on the river bank to pray, while others simply took off their clothes and jumped into the river with pious expressions. Watson watched all of that and felt a large amount of power surge from his body. That power came from the beliefs of the people in the city. The fortress city was too far away from the royal city, so it was difficult for them to get the latest news, let alone news of a significant event like the replacement of the seven gods. Watson had to cure their poison and also promote the new faith to get more believers. He also wanted the residents in the fortress city to get closer to the sea folks. It would make things easier for them in the future. This can kill many birds with one stone. I'm really a smart kid. Watson could not help but puff out his chest and praise himself in his heart. He could think of a method that did not depend entirely on himself. It was also related to Avril. After Avril was resurrected, she became the new saintess of the Holy See. She had taught him a lot of knowledge in that area. He turned around and looked into the distance with that thought in mind. On the bank of the river, a beautiful woman in a gorgeous robe and a crown was patting the heads of a few children. She smiled at them lovingly. Your Majesty, will I be handsome if I believe in Watson? Yes, believing in Watson will make you handsome and give you the strength to protect yourself in battles so that the elves can't capture you again. The woman's movements were gentle, and her eyes dimmed when she mentioned the elves. It was Queen Avril. When Watson opened the river passageways and brought the ministers to the fortress city, Avril did not come because the Holy Dragon Kingdom fought against the Elven Kingdom. She did not want to see either side get injured. After the Elven Kingdom's army temporarily withdrew from the fortress city, she went there through the Dragon Palace network. As soon as she arrived, she began her duties as a saintess and helped Watson preach his faith. Then I must believe in Watson. If I could protect my parents, they would not have died in that war, a young man said, his expression a little gloomy. What a good child. Your mother will definitely be proud of you. Avril picked up the boy and kissed him on his cheeks and said, even though you lost your parents, you still have friends. If you don't mind, you can treat me as your mother. Seriously? That's great. A group of children cheered excitedly. A few adult males went to Avril's side shyly. Your Majesty, we've also lost our parents in that war. If it's possible, can we treat you as our family too? Avril was stunned for a moment before nodding her head. She displayed a smile that looked like a blossoming flower. Of course. The adults looked at each other and clapped and cheered. Watson was a little envious. Avril had the appearance of an elf. 
However, the residents in the fortress city did not hate Avril. They were kind toward her too. It was a natural affinity, not everyone could do that. With Queen Avril's help, it's not a problem to gain the faith of the fortress city in a short time. What we need to do next is to reduce their suffering. Having made up his mind, Watson stretched his back and walked toward the directions outside the city. Chapter 533, The Heroes Who Died Here Outside the fortress city was an endless primeval forest. At that moment, an ample empty space had opened up in the primeval forest, and in the empty space were some tombstones. King Landar III led a group of generals from the fortress city to pay their respects at the tombstones. Fox wiped the tears from his face and kowtowed twice in front of a tombstone. This tombstone is for the strongest person in the city, Sinbad. He could have left before the city was breached, but in order to save the children, he had chosen to stay. The boy he saved is my son. It's a pity that my wife was brutally killed in that war. D asterisk M N the elves, I must make them pay. The person buried in the tomb is a generous and wealthy businessman. Typically, he donates his family's extra assets to persons in need in the city. He has assisted a large number of individuals in the fortress city. The person sleeping here is my wife. She has always been a wonderful wife. I was too busy with work to see her, yet she never complained. Not only that, but she would cook dinner for me every night when I got home. Just yesterday, she said that she would take the children and me to hunt in the forest to relax when I was not busy. Who would have thought that the disaster would come so quickly? Watson could still see the anguish on Fox and several of the generals' faces from a distance. Some of the tombstones were inscribed with phrases to indicate their identity. Some did not have a name and had a message that wished for the heroes that died there to rest in peace. Those folks had all played a role in the previous elven invasion. They were well aware that the elven army was unbeatable and that the elves were immortals, but not a single one of them escaped. At the end of the war, there were thousands of tombstones of various sizes. Watson hurried to the tombstones and stood behind King Landar III, bowing to the tombstones in front of him. Are you here to pay your respects, Watson? Yes, Your Majesty. Examine the tombstones carefully. They are all admirable beings, even if they are not as powerful as you. King Landar III sighed and motioned with his hand. The Holy Dragon Kingdom's strength stems from the selfless dedication of its people. Our people are courageous and selfless. I will compensate the relatives of those people with 10,000 gold coins. In addition, I will send someone to write those people's stories into history books. I will go ahead and set it up. Check to see if anyone remembers what those folks did when they were alive. I would like to hear as many specifics as possible. Yes, Your Majesty. I am really grateful. Fox bowed his head quickly and thanked him. Aside from the monetary incentive of 10,000 gold pieces, it was truly an honor to be immortalized in the annals of history. Many generals were sacrificed in battle in ancient times but only a few were recorded in history. King Landar III's acts at the time showed profound regard for those who had died. Watson examined the side profile of King Landar III. King Landar III's demeanor was a little uncomfortable when he said it. He could not tell if King Landar III was truly weeping for the dead or if he was using that way to get the gratitude of family members and secure his position. Watson did not care what King Landar III thought because he had something he needed to do here as well. Lord Fox, wait a moment. If you want to obtain information, instead of traveling to the city and asking about the dead's acquaintances, why not ask the dead themselves? What do you mean, Your Highness Watson? Fox came to a halt, frowning. He was about to depart and inform everyone about King Landar III's resolve to make the city's inhabitants happy when he was stopped by Watson, which irritated him. If Watson had contacted him for something essential, he would not have ignored him. However, Watson had stated that he should question the dead, which was extremely insulting. In order to save the residents of the city, Watson had dealt with all of the marionette poison on his own, 
and he was a little relieved that he had feigned not to see Watson's preaching in the city. However, not long after that, Watson's expression changed. Did he think that he could take credit for curing the people in the city? Was that what Watson was really like? Watson could guess Fox's thoughts based on his looks. He spoke quietly, it is insignificant. I only think those folks were killed for no reason. It is just heartbreaking. Rather than burying them as cold corpses, I can resurrect them and reunite them with their family. But Lord, Fox appears to be quite upset with my conduct. Why don't we let it go? What did you say, Your Highness Watson? Do you have the ability to bring the dead back to life? That's right. Watson nodded as he faced Fox, who was in shock and had his eyes wide open. Fox would not believe it if he had just met Watson. He had already seen Watson's cure for the marionette poison. Even after learning that he was the kingdom's strongest genius, he still refused to believe it. How is it possible to resurrect the dead? It is something I had never heard of. Only necromancers have had some comprehension of the resurrection of the dead since ancient times. However, the resurrection spell they cast can only allow the corpse to move. It is a cloaked evil spell used to manipulate the corpse. Are you referring to the same type of demonic spell? It was not just Fox. Even the noblemen and ministers in the fortress cities were discussing it animatedly. Their words were filled with distrust. I am merely doing it out of goodwill. If you do not believe me, forget about it. Watson turned to go, waving his hand. Fox abruptly stopped him. Please wait a moment, Your Highness Watson. You claim to be able to resurrect the dead. It is the first time we have seen anything like it. Please try to understand. I am wondering if you could do a test. The strongest person in the city is buried here. He had paid the price for the conflict. We should revive him first. If you can do it, then let him be the first. Sure, I'll give it a try. Watson reached out and pressed on his chest. The race chess piece immediately emitted light, and the outline of a chess piece that emitted starlight appeared outside his chest. Human Creation Chapter 534, The Hero Awakens Watson triggered the ability produced by the human chess piece with a simple shout. When he opened his right hand, the magical power of life elements manifested in it. The green magic power outlined the human body's bones in the air, followed by flesh and blood. Soon after, a living being materialized in the open space. That person was naked, had dark green hair, and had a gorgeous face. His bare muscles were brimming with tremendous force. The attractive man raised his hand and caressed his chest once he appeared. I recall being killed by an elven elite. How did I end up here? Am I not dead? It's Sinbad. He really came back to life. When the ministers of the fortress city saw the figure in front of them, they could not help but exclaim. Even Fox was taken aback. He would not have accepted Watson's comments about reviving people if he had not witnessed it with his own eyes. Sinbad's physical characteristics, look, and body were all the same save for his hair color. Is that actually a resurrected person? Fox paused for a second before reaching out his right hand to the man in front of him, muttering to himself. Sinbad, do you still remember me, he said. Aren't you Lord Fox? Did you send someone to cure me? No, it wasn't me. It was His Highness Watson Fox replied awkwardly. Just like when he was poisoned, he still did not choose Watson, and Watson used the truth to slap him in the face. Behind Fox, the other people also peered at Watson. Their eyes were wide with wonder. Sinbad, who had been resurrected, noticed Watson when they felt the gazes from all directions. Watson? I think I have heard that name before. I remember now. He's a genius in the kingdom, he exclaimed after a lengthy period of thought. I recall a messenger from the royal city coming to the fortress city a few days ago and saying that the royal city was looking for geniuses. Any genius could go to the royal city and join a competition, earning the criteria to enter the royal academy. 
it is a surprise that I could heal myself in that situation. It would be simple to explain if I were a genius from the royal city. Lord Sinbad, the matter you heard about happened a long time ago. Watson smiled awkwardly but politely as he rested his left hand on his right shoulder. Please allow me to introduce myself. My name is Watson, and the king has bestowed upon me the title of strongest genius in the kingdom. I apologize. The fortress city is too far away. Many in the kingdom can't be delivered in time. It makes no difference. I want to tell you something. I did not cure you. Instead, after your death, I resurrected you. Resurrected? So I was dead before. Sinbad paused to reflect. Seeing that he was not too surprised, Watson asked tentatively, Don't you feel surprised? Resurrection is not a common thing. If you are wondering whether I am surprised or not, the answer is yes. However, rather than being astonished, I am filled with excitement. My heart was pierced while fighting the elves, and I died. And now, I have no injuries, not even from years ago. I am also a force to be reckoned with. I have a feeling that I will be able to make my body stronger than it was when I was at my best. Whether I have been healed or resurrected, I would like to thank you from the bottom of my heart for allowing me to stand here. Sinbad shifted his weight. A dense emerald green light layer formed on the surface of his body, creating an emerald green leaf robe. There existed a power known as the life element. It did not exist in his body at first, but it was completely under his control then. As one would expect from a powerful guy. His ability to embrace new experiences is really quick. Watson could not help but nod in agreement. If Sinbad were like Fox and the others, he would still need to make some effort to demonstrate that he was perplexed by the circumstances after being resurrected. Looking around, most of the others acknowledged that Sinbad was the person they recognized. However, there were still a few people whose eyes glowed with trepidation. Watson thought for a bit, then raised his right leg toward Sinbad's tombstone. Bang! His leg kicked the tombstone hard and smashed it with a muffled sound. Under the damaged tombstone, a massive casket was uncovered. The coffin plate was destroyed as well. A corpse had yet to decompose beneath it. A headless body in armor had a severed head on top of the corpse. There was a wound on the corpse's chest that had already scabbed. It was Sinbad's body. The head was exactly the same as Sinbad's. The body abruptly weathered, as if it did not exist, since it was exposed to the air. It disintegrated into dust and vanished into thin air. Sinbad's body disappeared, someone cried out in surprise. According to the resurrection rules, after a person is revived, their old body vanishes. Do any of you still disagree with what I said? Watson inquired, gripping his shoulders. The distinction between humans was not in their bodies but their souls. The body was merely a vessel. After a person died, the soul returned to the human chess piece while the body continued to deteriorate. Watson reshaped the soul with the human chess piece and gave it a new body with the life force. When confronted with Watson's query, everyone glanced at each other in disbelief. A booming voice emerged after a brief quiet. Your Highness Watson, I believe that you have mastered the art of resurrection. Please resurrect my son. It's better to resurrect my father first. Your Highness Watson, if you can do it, I'm willing to give you money. I'm willing to pay 100 gold coins. You want to go first with 100 gold coins? Move to the back of the queue. I'll pay 1000 gold coins. Please resurrect a few of my family members first, Your Highness Watson. The crowd began to argue with one another. Each of them appeared eager as they pushed and shoved in front of Watson. If they did not believe Watson then, they did after witnessing the corpse in the casket vanish in front of their eyes. Furthermore, they had hoped that Watson would resurrect their family members. Fox was in the front row. He grimaced and spread his arms to signal for silence. Do not be so agitated, everyone. Form a line and proceed one at a time. After everyone had calmed down, 
he turned around and gave Watson an adoring glance. He rubbed his hands together and said, My wife, Your Highness Watson, had died in the conflict too. If you can resurrect Sinbad, you can also resurrect my wife. Lord Fox, you were the one who asked me to resurrect the soldiers who contributed to the war. I wonder what your wife has sacrificed in that war. My wife, she has not made many sacrifices. His wife was just an ordinary person and did not have great strength. What could she have sacrificed? Furthermore, his wife had already been captured and killed when the elven army broke through the city. Then let's move to the back row, Fox. I want to resurrect the soldiers who died heroically in the battle first. Watson ignored Fox, who was crying, and said, How could that be? He walked toward the crowd in front of him, trying hard to hold back the smile on his face. Chapter 535, Trust in the Authority of the Gods, Not Mercy That's great, Father. You're awake. My wife is fine. That's great. Praise the gods, no, praise young Master Watson. Watson had been at the graveyard for half an hour. The cemetery had grown rather bustling at that point. Many people in aristocratic or poor attire grieved hard as they hugged and wept for their relatives who had been resurrected by Watson. They were incredibly ecstatic. Those who had been resurrected did not comprehend the circumstances at first. Their faces were expressionless. They grew enthusiastic and could not help but praise Watson when the others around them explained the issue plainly. Thank you so much, Your Highness Watson, for resurrecting my wife. For the last two days, I had been consumed by the agony of losing my beloved. I had been thinking about what my son would do if he lost his mother at his age. In a nutshell, this is fantastic. Fox stood in the crowd, clutching a beautiful woman with brown hair. He could not help but lower his head in front of Watson. The woman beside him took out a handkerchief to wipe his tears and bent her head in gratitude to Watson. That brown-haired woman was Fox's wife, who had been murdered by an elven elite during the elves' invasion. Fox asked her a few more private questions after she was resurrected. He stated unequivocally that she was his wife. Despite the fact that his wife was the last to be resurrected because he suspected Watson, the joy in his heart convinced him not to pursue the subject. At the same time, he resolved that he would never question Watson again for fear of Watson's retaliation. Young Master Watson, I had a few casualties at home. Can you help me resurrect them? In fact, our family is short of funds and doesn't have the money to buy a cemetery plot. Therefore, only our father, who has a noble title, is buried here. The same goes for our family. Someone from the revived people's families suppressed his joy and asked Watson. Of course. Watson nodded. That's great. Many folks who were not dressed well all excitedly waved their fists. Those noblemen who did not lack money were swayed by their talk. My father has been dead for over ten years, Your Highness Watson. His graveyard has always been a part of our family. I have been missing him a lot lately and longing to meet him. I am curious if you can bring back those who died more than ten years ago. A large-bellied nobleman tidied his tie, his gaze flickering. Just as he finished speaking, another nobleman rolled his eyes and said, You're resurrecting your father just to seize the property from his hands, right? I heard that your father transferred a portion of the family's property before he died. Right? You want him to ask about the whereabouts of that property, right? No, don't talk nonsense. The nobleman who was questioned tried their hardest to contradict it, but their feeble demeanor did not convince the crowd. Ignore that person, Your Highness Watson. I lost Petals three years ago, and I've been crying and hoping to see her again. Now is the time to seize the chance. I am willing to pay 1,000 gold pieces to restore the fortress city if you can assist me in resurrecting my darling petals. A voluptuous lady buried her face with her hands as she spoke. The male companion beside her had a puzzled expression. Petals? Who is that? I've never heard of such a person in your family. That was before I married you. By the way, 
Petals is my dog. Many noblemen begged Watson to help them resurrect their families. Some were willing to pay a premium price, and the price swiftly climbed from 1,000 gold coins to 10,000 gold coins. Those people's voices drowned out the commoners who had before implored Watson for assistance. They waved their arms uncomfortably, not daring to speak. Watson, meanwhile, scratched his ears at the rowdy nobleman, his head riddled with black lines. Resurrecting a father who has been deceased for almost ten years in order to grab the family estate? There are even others who wish to resurrect their pet dogs. What exactly is this? The demands of those noblemen are far too absurd. He could understand if it was to resurrect a dead relative to meet them. However, he could not agree to resurrect something that was not even human for the sake of benefits, the resurrection spell was not something that could be used casually. After all, humans' resources were fixed. The more people resurrected, the greater the consumption. After a brief moment of thought, Watson stated solemnly, I am sorry, I can't consent to your request unless you increase the fee. Increase the price? Your Highness Watson, just tell us how much you want us to increase the price. Ten million gold coins. No matter who you want to resurrect, animals or anything else, it's the same price. That, that price is too high. Some people looked troubled after hearing Watson's words. Ten million gold coins was an amount that many families could not offer even if they sold all their assets. It even required several families to work together to afford it. Watson had resurrected many people for free, so they thought he would not request a higher price. They did not expect Watson to be so generous. The process is also a challenge for me. I assisted everyone in resurrecting their loved ones for free because they died in the fight with the elves. I admire them. You must provide me with a sufficient payment if you wish to resurrect people for your own selfish objectives. Is that not quite reasonable? Watson took a look around and spoke each phrase firmly, I truly like the saying always believe in a god's authority, not his pity. If you believe I will assist you for free, you are mistaken. His Highness Watson meant that we are lacking in consideration. After a little while, the several noblemen gazed at one another and bowed their heads in shame. They did intend to use Watson as a scapegoat. They had developed a kind of reverence for Watson when they were exposed. He was definitely an adolescent, but he seemed to have the ability to look through people's hearts, instilling fear in them from the bottom of their souls. Oh, Your Highness Watson, I think the proverb you just spoke is weird. I am curious as to which individual in the kingdom stated that. After a little pause, someone raised their hand and inquired. Watson pointed at himself. I said it. So you made it up. The noblemen rolled their eyes but remained silent. Although Watson's adage did not come from the lips of a wise man, it was intriguing and might make them ponder carefully. Always believe in the gods' authority, not their pity. Watson has the ability to speak words that even I can't. King Landar III rubbed his chin and chewed on what Watson had just said as he stood near the audience. His expression was solemn. He did not see the ministers, except for a few generals patrolling around him. Those ministers had already been dispatched back through the Dragon Palace network when the Elven Kingdom's army retreated to keep the royal city running normally. King Landar III intended to accompany them, but he insisted on staying, and the ministers had no choice but to agree. I hoped to wait here to watch what kind of attack the Elven Kingdom would unleash, but I was surprised to hear something unexpected. If Watson becomes king of the Holy Dragon Kingdom, he will undoubtedly be a good ruler. King Landar III regarded Watson with satisfaction, but his expression was soon obscured by profound darkness that grew hollow and scary. It is a shame that such a setup is doomed to fail. Chapter 536, The Elves' Battle Plan Dozens of kilometers away from the fortress city, in a vast primitive forest, was the elves' base connected to the Forest of Eternity. A massive green magical array flashed, and a swarm of elves headed by the elven king arrived in the array. Many of those elves were in shambles. Their bodies were reconstructed and returned to their former state in a short amount of time. They did not appear to have been hurt, 
although they did appear to be a little frail. D asterisk MN that King Landar III. It wasn't easy for me to take over the southern fortress city in the Holy Dragon Kingdom. How long has it been? When the Elven King returned to the primeval forest, he angrily extended his right fist and violently knocked on a nearby tree. The peak platinum tier strength swiftly shattered the thick ancient tree, and leaves flew everywhere. Don't get too worked up, King Jersey. After all, we have all safely evacuated, even the defeated Elder Langton. Furthermore, your majesty's poison must have begun to work. That poison is forbidden in our elven kingdom. If we do not keep it under control, the human ministers that accompanied King Landar III may become infected. Even if we do not attack at that time, the Holy Dragon Kingdom will be in disarray. An elderly man whispered gently behind the elven king. That old man had a circular eyeglass on his right eye and a leaf and flower wreath on his head. He was missing a few teeth and spoke at a slow speed. That old guy was one of the four elders that traveled to the Holy Dragon Kingdom with the Elven King to oppose the conflict. Pagani was the Elven race's third elder. He was not particularly powerful, he was merely at peak gold tier, but he was well known for his intelligence. It was his plan to poison the human cities in order to force King Landar III to yield. Initially, he intended to utilize the poison to make humans a source of infection. He intended to infect city guards in neighboring cities and force them to unlock city gates. It was not a bad idea, though, to make that poison a threat to the king of the Holy Dragon Kingdom. Pagani, weren't you opposed to fighting before? Why did you come up with such a vicious plan this time? Another white-haired old woman with a cane alongside the elven king spoke after Pagani. The elderly lady appeared to have lost all of her teeth. Her lips had sunken, and her voice had become hoarse. Aren't you also averse to fighting, Daphne? Didn't you bring the elven kingdom's most famous assassin here? I heard Beta from the assassination team murdered almost 200 humans in that conflict and was rewarded by his majesty. Pagani pushed his glasses upward and said it slowly. Daphne's eyes sparked as she heard his comments, and she sneered bitterly, Beta has a unique personality in the assassination team if his majesty had not told him not to kill too many people, he might have slaughtered everyone in the city. Initially, I did not want to have such an immense struggle with the humans, but since I accompanied his majesty on the trip, I must do everything in my power to prevent the holy dragon kingdom's invasion. We, like some individuals, did not do enough and ruined far too much. They nearly killed all of us in the fortress city. Daphne snorted coldly as she gazed at the heart of the elven army. It was an elderly elf who had collapsed. That elf was Landon, who had shown his strength in the fortress city but had been defeated by Watson in a single move. He was no longer in a coma, and he appeared irritated after hearing Daphne's statements. Daphne, what do you mean? Are you saying that we lost the battle because of me? Isn't it? Would we have fled if you had not recklessly employed a secret druid spell in the fortified city and lost? Do you believe I want to fail? I have exhausted all of my resources, but I still have not defeated the Holy Dragon Kingdom's army. Is it all my fault? Don't you see how the Holy Dragon Kingdom's people are besieged by the sea folk and the dragons? Not just me, but even His Majesty's projection has been halted. Is there anything I can do? Landon attempted to defend himself, attempting to shift the blame to the Elven King. Daphne, on the other hand, did not believe him and proceeded to taunt him, saying, You have battled a twelve or thirteen year old young man, and he knocked you unconscious with one move. It is the most humiliating existence in Elven history. Even though His Majesty was defeated, he was defeated by the Dragon King. Is he comparable to the Dragon King or a weak human? Landon, I think you should stop claiming that the elves are the strongest. Humph, even so, is not it immoral for you to rest all your fighting aspirations on me rather than fighting here? Let us not discuss those, instead, let us focus on Erland. He just stood there and watched as I attacked. Don't you believe you should reprimand him? Landon directed his finger at Erland, who had been frowning since the outset and had said nothing. 
many elves followed him and scrutinized him. Elder Landon, I recall that I initially wished to stop you from fighting with the human army, Erland moaned, sensing the gazes from all sides. The king of the Holy Dragon Kingdom dared to come here, so he is confident in his ability to annihilate us. Going against them in the first place was not a good decision. See, Landon, it's obvious that Erland had thought about it before saying such words. Compared to you, he is much wiser. Daphne snorted again. Landon's face was flushed with rage, and his cheekbones twitched. Why do you like to argue with me, Daphne? That battle's failure has nothing to do with anyone else. It is entirely my fault. I will confess it. Do you have anything further to say? Stop arguing, everyone. The attack on the Holy Dragon Kingdom would not have gone as smoothly as planned. That is in line with my expectations. Even though the war was a colossal failure, it provided us with a clear picture of the Holy Dragon Kingdom's strength. That new type of weapon, totally encased in an iron shell and capable of transforming into a monster, will be our most formidable foe. At the same time, we know that the Holy Dragon Kingdom has aided the dragons. The next phase is to devise ways to sever the bond between them, and then to deal with those lethal weapons. The Elven King looked around. The elven elders who were quarreling fell silent in the face of his dignified gaze. Compared to the Holy Dragon Kingdom, the elven kingdom was already at a disadvantage in military power. Despite the elven king's deployment of the power from the Spring of Life and the elven race chess piece, the scales of victory had not shifted significantly. They were still reliant on the dragons and the Winter Nation. The dragons were not reliable anymore, but there was still the Winter Nation. I believe that the human ruler is not at the heart of that conflict, but rather the young man named Watson. The dragons refer to him as the Dragon Emperor, and he is surrounded by sea folk. Clearly, his standing among sea folks is not low. If we can capture him, we can enlist the assistance of those two races. That way, even if we do not have the support of the Winter Nation, we can still defeat the Holy Dragon Kingdom. Pagani adjusted his glasses and spoke thoughtfully. Many of the elves there agreed with his statements. Watson's oddity was obvious to them. He was obviously young, but he was well liked by people of both races. He also had command of the kingdom's new weapon. They did not know if he would make it or not. They were talking about Watson's identity as the future successor of the Holy Dragon Kingdom, it was worth being captured and interrogated. Pagani your idea is not a bad one. However, I must caution you that Watson is not as innocent as he appears on the surface. When I cast the druid's secret skill, he can even flip me over. Landon laughed as he relived Watson's incredible power. Watson had flipped him over in the stronghold city. Then, Landon touched his arm unconsciously. I know so we can't only use force to persuade Watson, we can use other methods. Pagani grinned, revealing his white teeth that reflected cold light. For example, poisoning him, or capturing his family and friends to threaten him, there are many ways to do it. Then everything is settled. Our attention will change from conquering the Holy Dragon Kingdom to dealing with Watson. It is advisable to apprehend that young man while he is still alive. If it is not possible, we can utilize a corpse. Everyone, consider what you want to do later. The Elven King waved his hand, establishing the Elven Kingdom's future fighting strategy. That, in his opinion, was just a short-term combat plan that would be quickly realized. Chapter 537, Supernatural Evolution There are many ways to kill Watson. The assassins can infiltrate the cities in the Holy Dragon Kingdom and disguise themselves as humans. They can catch Watson off guard and attack him when he passes by. Four ancient men sat together with King Jersey in the forest, in the elven army's headquarters, deciding how to cope with Watson. The four elders were discussing the issue. King Jersey did nothing but cross his arms and frown, deep in thought. Daphne, it's okay to ambush Watson, but who should do it? Your assassins? While they are great they would not be able to kill Watson. Even I can't fight him. 
that suggests the youngster either has a formidable tool or his strength exceeds mine. Landon fiercely disputed Daphne's notion. For such a strong guy, as long as the killer has a hint of killing intent, he will be immediately discovered. Even if he can't feel the killer's murdering intent, it is useless. What about poison? Poison is also not an option. A person of such strength also has a certain level of poison resistance. It will be hard to injure him unless it is an incurable poison. Didn't His Majesty say it is best to catch him alive? This will not work. That, too, will not work. Tell me what to do, Landon. Daphne's eyes narrowed as she huffed in displeasure after being rejected numerous times. I am thinking, Landon resentfully answered. It was clear that he did not have a good idea. Pagani, who was not far away, shoved his spectacles upward. So, no matter what approach is used, the key is to ensure that it is effective against Watson and will not injure him. I have an idea, he said calmly. What is it? Everyone asked in unison, and even the Elven King looked at him. We can use the power of law in the Elven chess pieces to our advantage. The gods fought over the race chess pieces in ancient times, and they had great power. Fortunately, our ancestors did their best to retain some of the elven chess pieces back then, and he left one for us to keep, allowing the elven race to survive until today. If we can exploit the energy stored within the chess pieces, we will be able to injure Watson and also make a breakthrough in that fight. Pagani, are you crazy? Unless it is a matter of life and death, we must not use the elven chess piece or reveal its existence. Otherwise, we will face a disaster. When confronted with Daphne's answer, Pagani stated calmly, it is a question of life and death. Do you think the Holy Dragon Kingdom will let us go if we don't catch Watson and defeat them? The war has already started. There is no other option than determining the outcome. You're right. Daphne's voice had weakened. Using the power of the elven chess piece not bad. That is a good idea. As long as we can destroy the Holy Dragon Kingdom, we have to try everything. I'll use that power now. You guys can go to the army later and choose a hundred soldiers. I have a good plan. King Jersey crossed his hands and stood up from his seat after a brief period of thought. He had a grim look in his eyes. I wonder if your majesty has any good ideas. Can I hear them? At that moment, a woman's voice came from outside the tent. The forest dragon king, Rita, slowly walked in from outside. Her right hand was twirling her green hair, and her expression was neutral. Do you still have the guts to return here, forest dragon king? King Jersey snorted, his cheeks flushed with uncontrollable rage. Who allowed you in here? I explicitly told the soldiers not to let anyone in during our discussion. He would have slain King Landar III if not for the Forest Dragon King's intervention. The Holy Dragon Kingdom would undoubtedly tumble into disarray if King Landar III abdicated. I don't want to come back either, but I have to keep my commitment. Are you referring to the soldiers? The Forest Dragon King clapped her hands, and someone entered the tent. It was two dragons each holding an unconscious elf soldier. You not only aided the Holy Dragon Kingdom, but you also attacked my subordinates. You have broken your promise. Are you planning to assault me next? It appears that Your Majesty has misunderstood my intention. I am not going to do that. We had already agreed that you would provide me water from the Spring of Life, and I would assist you in dealing with the Holy Dragon Kingdom when we signed the contract. However, Young Master Watson was not included in the equation. Young Master Watson is the Dragon Emperor and part of the Dragon Clan. I do not mind if you attack the Holy Dragon Kingdom, but please don't blame me for being rude if you dared attack Young Master Watson. For example, the new idea you mentioned, if there is anything that would be detrimental to the Dragon Emperor, please excuse me for not agreeing with it. The Forest Dragon King was smiling but the coldness in her words made everyone in the room tremble unconsciously. Rest assured, Forest Dragon King. We have no intention of attacking Watson. We were just discussing how to capture King Landar III. 
Pagani quickly tried to smooth things over, and only then did the Forest Dragon King restrain her terrifying, powerful aura. I see. I've helped in the fortress city just now. I'm a little tired now. I need to go back and rest. The Forest Dragon King motioned toward her two followers to toss the elf guards to the ground and walk away without looking back. The Elven King gnashed his teeth in rage at the scene. He tightened his fists unconsciously. She obviously did nothing, yet she is exhausted. That scumbag, disgusting woman. It is pointless to be upset now, Your Majesty. It is good that the dragons did not express open hostility toward us. We may temporarily keep the dragons happy in this approach. However, what should we do next? Should we keep going after Watson? Daphne seemed concerned. She grew unsure of the plan that they had devised after hearing the Forest Dragon King's statements. After all, she had seen how the Forest Dragon King had repelled the ancestor elf's onslaught with one blow. The implications would be unthinkable if the dragons sided with the Holy Dragon Kingdom because of Watson. Keep going with the plan. The dragon wants me to quit? They are underestimating me. As long as I activate the chess piece's power, the elves will get a breakthrough, King Jersey said as he released his clenched fist and drew a race chess piece that shimmered with a faint green glow. It makes no difference how powerful the Forest Dragon King is. After all, according to the elves' records, their power exceeds that of regular gods and might even be more extraordinary. That ability was dubbed the supernatural evolution by the ancient elves. Chapter 538, Evolution of Mythical Creatures Are those the elves you have chosen? Half an hour later, King Jersey stood in front of the elven army, studying the 100 soldiers in front of him. Erland had handpicked all the 100 elves. No one knew the elves in the army better than him. Yes, your majesty. Those elves were all chosen based on your specifications. Their power ranges from peak silver to gold. They have powerful personalities as well as powerful physiques. Most significantly, they have no kin to look after in the elven kingdom. Erland aimed his finger at the soldiers in front of him. He took them one by one toward King Jersey. Not bad. Jersey nodded and drew the elven race chess pieces. The emerald green light, which represented nature, immediately attracted the attention of all the elves. I need you to help me with a quest. I will bestow the elven chess pieces power to you. This situation will be somewhat dangerous. Can you do it? You can rest assured, your majesty. As soldiers, it is our duty to defend the elven kingdom and serve the elven king. The 100 soldiers puffed up their chests and stomped their feet. You, take a step forward. King Jersey motioned for the first soldier to come forward without saying anything further. He held the elven chess piece in front of him and pressed it against his chest when the other party took his steps. The elven soldier had an enthusiastic expression on his face when he first touched the elven chess piece. He closed his eyes in pleasure and let the warm green energy wrap around his chest. However, his elation quickly changed to anguish, and the green energy began to boil and turn crimson as well. As it burrowed into his body, it transformed into wisps of hot wind, baring its fangs and brandishing its claws. Roar! After the green energy burrowed into his body, the elf quickly knelt on the ground and let out a wild beast roar that did not look like an elf's ability. His flesh twitched with it as streams of fresh blood flowed from beneath his damaged skin. It grew in midair and formed into harsh steel thorns. It seemed like a human body had sprouted jagged monster fangs. It was absolutely terrifying. While they observed the scene, many of the nearby elves had fled. They seemed pale because they were terrified. The blood-stained thorns on the soldier's body, which was covered in thorns, were sometimes long and sometimes short. They occasionally touched the ground causing it to turn crimson and the plants to wither, turning into blood-colored pus with a horrible odor. What is going on? Why did they become such fearsome creatures after inheriting the elven chess piece's power? Isn't this the chess piece entrusted to us by our ancestors? Many elves talked, 
and the more timid ones had already covered their lips and nearly vomited. The elves were a proud and beautiful race. They would rather give up on becoming stronger if they had to adopt such an unattractive appearance to gain power. Do not worry. That is merely a side effect of the elven chess piece's power. He will be fine in no time at all. King Jersey's face was grim when he observed the scene in front of him. He forced himself to ignore it. He had read about the elven chess piece in the archives. He was aware that the entire elven race chess set was capable of miraculous evolution. Supernatural evolution, as the term implied, was the ability to evolve, despite logic and common sense. Some creatures had vanished in the long river of history due to the evolution of the world, while others had survived. To adapt to its surroundings and thrive, a species must constantly evolve. It would be exterminated if it could not adapt to its surroundings. Living in a cold environment would result in creatures developing cold-resistant fur, and living in a hot environment would result in creatures developing heat resistance. That was evolution's instinct. Some dragons, for example, were born strong, while others were born feeble. That was also the reason why their evolutionary levels were incompatible. Even if humans and other races cultivated to become starlight tier gods, that was still an evolutionary process. Did having the power of a god imply that there was a power that could allow life to evolve indefinitely, with the body of a mortal always morphing into the body of a god? The answer was yes. At that point, the elf's body, which had transformed into a spike in front of the elves, gradually extended to become a massive iron ball with barbs a few meters in circumference. Its original shape was completely obscured. The iron ball contracted a few minutes later. It allowed him to regain his elven appearance, but his skin had a layer of metallic luster on top of it. The elf exhaled deeply. He realized that his brow was drenched in sweat as he examined his own body. The surface of his skin had cracked, and blood spilled from his eyes, condensing into a flying blade in the air. It left a deep crater in the ground at a speed that was impossible to notice with the naked eye. How are you feeling? King Jersey's stiff face eased as he inquired. Your Majesty, I am feeling better than I have ever felt. When I first drank from the spring of life, I was just at peak silver tier. But now I have reached the platinum tier and have the strength of mythical animals. No, to be more specific, I have become a fabled species known as the blood demon race. I am not sure why, but after taking the elven chess piece, I feel content. The elf expressed his dissatisfaction with the situation. Blood demons were beings that existed in ancient times. Their structure was distinct from that of most living beings at the time. Their main body was made of blood. Their brain was not used to thinking on the spot. However, the blood-based bodily structure was immune to physical attacks and had an extremely excellent self-healing ability. Even if it was cut into pieces, as long as one of it survived, it could be recovered by absorbing nutrients. When fighting enemies, the blood might be condensed into weapons that were equivalent, if not superior, to the user. An extremely lethal blood-soluble toxin was also present in the blood. It was a powerful race in ancient times. So this the blood demon race. Jersey nodded. There were records of that mythical creature in the historical records of the ancient elves, in fact, the ancient elves had tried to use the powerful rule power contained in the race chess pieces to carry out several evolutions. They had also recorded the evolved creatures, including the blood demon race. There were records of that fabled creature in the ancient elves' history chronicles. The ancient elves attempted to carry out multiple evolutions by utilizing the great power of law in the race chess pieces. They also documented the developed creatures, such as the blood demon race. The elves' appearance resulted from the race chess piece evolving over time. They could live long lives, have a natural affinity, and have a regal appearance. Without question, that was the world's most ideal race. The ancient elf was another race that had evolved into their current appearance. That was why the elf race was also known as the tree spirit seed in ancient times. One soldier has already evolved successfully. Who will be the next to go? 
Jersey brandished the race chess piece in front of him. Evolved species could evolve to higher levels thanks to the evolution energy contained in the elven chess piece. The level of evolution was tied to the creature's intrinsic talent and ability. The higher the stage of evolution, the greater the intrinsic talent. One had to be strong to deal with that. The elves exchanged glances and paused for a few seconds. Then a female elf rose to her feet. I can do it. The elven king also kept the elven chess piece's power. The female elf began to roll on the ground, wailing in agony. After a while, the hair and flesh on her body peeled away, revealing red and white flowers that had heaped together. After a few moments, the flowers merged and reverted to the female elf. If one looked closely, one would notice that the female elf's skin had faint flower petal patterns and that there was colorful poisonous gas. A few birds that soared above the branches dropped down and jerked on the ground, turning into a pool of blood, just by dispersing the poisonous vapors in the air. I have also become a mythical creature the ferocious poison overlord flower, the female soldier exclaimed. The remaining elves gritted their teeth and stepped forward. They touched the elf chess piece while under King Jersey's command. A stunning evolution was created in the primordial forest in an instant. Chapter 539, Rebuilding the Elves' Glory Days The purpose of evolution is to allow a species to change into a form that is more appropriate for that world. There are two forms in this world that are best suited for nature. The first is an element, while the second is a plant. King Jersey stared at the elves who had completed their evolution and had elements and plant features on their body. He was overcome with emotion. The extinct elemental giants were the ancestors of the world's oldest elemental beings. When the elemental giants reached adulthood, they would have platinum tier or even higher strength. Their massive bodies gave them the ability to destroy the entire globe with a wave of their hands. They could modify the weather and generate elemental tides with a single breath. If it were not for their poor fertility, the elemental giants would undoubtedly be the world's rulers. The life forms that came after the elemental giants were mythological monsters like blood demons, which were formed of blood. There were a lot of metal components in the blood, which might be used to make weapons. It could also be thought of as an elemental life form. The elemental elves are the most prevalent beings in the world. They were entirely composed of elements, and they had simple intelligence. To put it into context, they were all descended from ancient elemental species. Plants, which were the evolutionary path chosen by the ancient elves in the past, were no weaker than the elements. Plants could absorb light via photosynthesis, roots and soil could also absorb other nutrients, and plants were not as delicate as other species on that planet. Plants could grow in rock fissures, and seemingly fragile roots could penetrate rock. There were hardly any animals in the arid desert climate yet some plants could survive relatively well compared to the strength of the elemental monsters. The denacious life of plants was precisely what the ancient elves saw. The evolution of the elves from the tree elf species was caused by the elves employing the race chess pieces to evolve while constantly eliminating the consequences of non-plant elemental growth. It was a manipulated evolution. That procedure was faster than typical evolution but also reasonably lengthy. The life energy of living creatures powered the elven chess piece's potential to evolve. The elves in front of them had all drunk from the spring of life. Logically, their life energy was nearly endless, but they could not keep evolving. The reason was that their strength and talent were insufficient. They would cause their bodies to collapse if they continued to evolve. In that world, there were many different beings. Aside from the elements and plants, there were also humans, sea folks, dragons, and so forth. The purpose of the elven chess pieces was to help the elves keep their race alive. It was not possible for all life forms to cohabit with other races. Their body would collapse due to disharmony if too many life forms were in them. The elves' ability to grow into mythological creatures while remaining self-aware proved their undoing. They would most likely become a more powerful but irrational hunk of flesh if they kept evolving. I had no idea the energy contained in the elven chess piece was even more potent than I had anticipated. A peak silver tier elf can advance to platinum tier, 
while a gold tier elf can advance to peak platinum tier. I would have used that energy a long time ago if I had known it could help the elven army finish its transition. It turns out that the ancient elves had always wielded such a strong force. They possessed such great energy, but why would the old tradition state that such a force was extremely harmful and should only be employed when absolutely necessary? King Jersey surveyed the army of 100 mythological creatures in front of him, ranging from platinum tier to peak platinum tier. He was pleasantly surprised but also a little perplexed. The elven race chess piece had always been considered a taboo within the race. No one was permitted to utilize it. He might not have realized the Holy Dragon Kingdom's strength if he had not used the race chess piece to fight it. In the face of such a heinous ability as supernatural evolution, if the elves were willing to obtain the advantages of any other race, then they could evolve into any race in the world. He could not understand why the ancient elves did not dominate the world with such an extraordinary ability. Perhaps the ancestors were excessively conservative and evolved just within the range of plants, which is why they were so oppressed by the other races. Since ancient times, our race has been far too nice. It is not the same anymore. I want to release that power and show the world just how powerful we are. I will reforge the elven race's splendor. He would bring in a total of 100,000 elves. Even someone as powerful as the Forest Dragon King would tremble if all the elves transformed into mythological animals. Elders, I am curious if you would like to harness the elven race chess pieces power. Regular elves can turn into such strong entities. If you used it, you could become a strong being on par with the gods. King Jersey could not help but shake the race chess piece in his hand as he solicited advice from the four elders. Your Majesty, I apologize. We will skip it. If you really want to become powerful, Your Majesty, you can try it yourself. You are still at peak platinum tier. The elders shook their heads as they looked at the evolved elves. Most of them possessed plant like traits. Some of them even had their lower bodies transformed into trees that took root in the soil. Compared to typical elves, they resembled trees with facial features and four limbs that could walk. In ancient times, elves had taken that form. That was not something they could bear for the sake of having a powerful body to return to their ancestors. Yes, I see. What a shame. I will not force you to evolve if you do not want to. I, for one, will make use of the power contained in it. King Jersey sighed, a sorrowful expression on his face. Is there a reason why you can't use the elven chess piece, your majesty? Daphne asked. Not really, but as the king, I have to keep my image up. It will be detrimental to my dignity if I evolve into such a form, King Jersey said. Maybe that was why the ancient elves did not abuse race chess pieces. It appeared that his forefathers were likewise drawn to beauty. Daphne was speechless. It was the same as the other elders. Okay, let's not get into that right now. The experiment was a huge success. Those evolved elves are already capable of dealing with Watson. But, just to be safe, I should take further precautions. King Jersey placed the elven race chess piece on the ground after a brief period of thought. The ground shook in a radius of several kilometers around him. The ground swelled, and vines grew out of it. They continued to peel off in mid-air, rising to become increasingly more powerful. It was not simply the vines either. The rocks that were spread throughout the earth also evolved. They developed limbs and facial features and began to resemble mythical monsters. Those altered vines and rocks, still twisted together and growing into even greater creatures, exuded a powerful and demonic aura. Chapter 540, Assassins What happened? Why do my brows seem to be twitching? The forest dragon king, Rita, was sitting in a tent in a camp not far from the elven king and the others. She set the teacup down and scratched the gap between her brows. When she was at the fortress city, she was overjoyed to see Watson. She had planned to stay in the fortress city, but Watson had met her to acquire some information. She also had a contract with the elven army, so she had to return. 
her tremendous strength helped her feel the vibrations outdoors. She felt a deep sensation of threat in her heart for no apparent reason. She was a divine nature dragon, and the only things that could challenge her were godlike beings. Is it possible that a god has appeared in the world? It is simply not conceivable. Even as an advanced elite, I can stay in this world for a year before being ejected. Foreign gods usually have a difficult time entering this world. She stood up and walked out of the camp, mumbling to herself. She vanished in a flash from where she was. She was already at the source of the threat at the next moment. What are you doing? Looking at the elves led by King Jersey, it appeared that they were nothing out of the ordinary. They were the same as before, but there were shrubs more than a meter tall among the luscious trees. With a serene look, the elven king responded, Nothing. Really. The forest dragon king remained silent before she turned to go. She appeared to have fled, but in reality, she had covered her figure behind an ancient tree that the elves could not see. She paused for a while as she faced the old oak, but she put out a finger and swiped it across the tree trunk. Crack! That made an ear-piercing screech as her finger slashed at the tree's rough bark. The trunk was hacked open, revealing the emerald green liquid within. The odor filled the air immediately, and the tree trunk trembled as if it were alive. A bizarre creature's roar accompanied it. What is that? The forest dragon king was taken aback. Then, she took two steps backward and snarled, Don't tell me those foolish elves used their race chess pieces power in such a spot. People have always overestimated themselves and wished to do something dumb, from ancient times to the present. It has taken the elves tens of thousands of years to evolve and lose the tree spirit's appearance, yet many desire to repeat the past mistakes. I will wait and see what happens to those folks. As the forest dragon king left, King Jersey remained motionless. Have you gone and done it? Yes, I have, Landon said after taking a look around. Excellent. King Jersey extended his right hand, and a branch fell from the sky and landed in it. The leaf folded and flapped gently as it dropped, transforming into an emerald green butterfly that flapped its wings and soared high into the sky. After reaching a particular altitude, the butterfly gradually developed into a little bird. Then, the small bird flew into the sky, expanding its body to become a slightly smaller pterosaur. As I predicted, the elven race chess piece allows biological evolution and promotes non-biological evolution. Furthermore, non-biological evolution is faster. Thus, there is no need to be concerned about the problem. What kind of powerful thing will arise when evolution is free of the constraints of bloodlines or even species? It is difficult to imagine. Without a doubt, the elven race chess piece carries the world's most powerful power. King Jersey's eyes were ablaze with flames as he waved to the elves in attendance. Before conquering the Holy Dragon Kingdom, I still need to make certain plans. During this time, I will have to bother everyone to capture Watson for me, no matter the cost, no matter if it is life or death. I will launch a sweeping assault on the Holy Dragon Kingdom three days later. Oh, I still need to dispatch someone to notify the Winter Nation that it is time to act. We must take the lead. If the Winter Nation dares to break their promise and drag us down, we will seize the opportunity to destroy them after we have destroyed the Holy Dragon Kingdom. Yes, Your Majesty. The 100 elven soldiers humbly lowered their heads and agreed. They transformed into light streaks and flew toward the fortress city outside the primeval forest. At the fortress city, Watson had got there a day before. Throughout the day, he had progressively assisted the people in reviving soldiers who had died in the battle. The sea folks also transferred supplies from the royal city to the fortress city via the Dragon Palace network, assisting in the city's reconstruction. After a day, a portion of the city had recovered from its deteriorated state. Many of the residents had already risen early in the morning, as the sun had just risen. They brought buckets of water to the banks of the Golden River, which ran through the fortress city, and drew water from there. After drinking water from the Golden River, a person would be promoted to a gold-tier elite. 
Using it to soak our body can provide it with a powerful protective shield that can defend against swords and spears. It is very incredible. We would not have lost terribly to the elves if we did not have the Golden River. A garden armor grabbed a pail of water from the Golden River and cleaned his face with it. He stated that with renewed vigor. A swarm of troops dressed in the same gear was near him. One of them attempted to remove his armor and place it in the bucket, but his partner stopped him. What are you doing? You'll see. I am soaking my armor in the river. Since the water can alter the human body, will it have the same effect if we put weapons and armor in it? The soldier asked. His Majesty brought the river water here, it is a gift from the kingdom. It is quite valuable. How can you use it to accomplish such a feat? I understand how valuable the river water is. His Majesty said that it is prohibited to toss items into the river. If you wish to drink from it, you can't do so directly. Instead, you must take it from yourself using clean containers. However, there is a limit to how much we may use it. The river is now being used by hundreds of thousands of people in the fortress city. However, the water level appears to remain constant. That is enough to show that the river has greater capacity than we thought. Perhaps it is limitless. How can the world have inexhaustible resources? The other soldier mocked him. A golden light appeared on the soldier's drenched armor at that precise time. It exuded an even stronger aura. Even though it had not been upgraded to gold tier, it was far more powerful than the previous bronze tier armor. The river is not only effective for humans, but it also works on armor and weaponry. After soaking it in the water, it has been upgraded to silver tier. Its protective ability is no longer inferior to gold tier armor. The soldier yelled in astonishment as he took the armor from the bucket. The soldiers around him wanted to criticize his behavior, but after watching that scenario, they started taking off their armor and soaking them in the bucket too. On both sides of the river, people dressed in holy sea regalia were also there. Their garments were spotlessly white, and a golden insignia of the holy dragon kingdom was emblazoned on their chests. A portrait of a young man was on the insignia. That attire was the signature outfit of the Holy Dragon Kingdom's new Holy See. Watson, the guardian god, was depicted in the insignia. It was Queen Avril's strategy to create that collection of garments, the goal was to increase people's trust in Watson. Praise be to the wonderful young master Watson, who has bestowed upon us this holy water. Believe in him as much as you believe in the sun. The Hugh Bryan Cathedral is looking for more faithful followers. If you join now, you will receive the Holy Supper, blessed by young Master Watson, every day. He will also help you get a stronger ability. Would you like to get stronger? Then pay a visit to the Hugh Bryan Cathedral. Have you hit a snag in your cultivation? The Hugh Bryan Cathedral is your only option. You will be able to break through whether you are a warrior, a mage, or an archer. The Hugh Bryan Cathedral is a refuge a gathering place for gorgeous men and beautiful ladies. One by one, the believers carried buckets of water while handing out Holy See pamphlets to passers-by in order to propagate their faith. Fox was wrapped in a beautiful robe and stood by the river bank. As he looked around, he could not help but sigh at the young man in front of him. The fortress city has recovered in just one day. The residents appear to have forgotten about the battle. Your Highness, you are truly a remarkable individual. I am curious why you invited me here so early, Your Highness.